Well, we've arrived today on the outstanding lofts in England. In my recommendation, the best lofts in England at international level, world class level, of Walnut and Green of Manchester. Their performances over the last 18 years are world class. As good as any loft in England, absolutely awesome. Right then, Les, uh, when did you actually get in? involved in, uh, in, in Pigeons with the, the outstanding partnership what exists at this moment in time? Uh, I, well, we've been friends for the best part of 30 years and we've been all brought up with Pigeons. We had Pigeons in our blood since we were children, in our early teens, all of us. But we got together, like I said, we've known each other a long, long time and we got together a partnership in the back end of 1994. We raced our first races together in 1995, was it? And since then, really, well, we had good pigeons then, Steve. We had, well, well, decent pigeons. Yeah. But we made a, a conscious decision to really start to scour the continent and find better pigeons. We believed that the better pigeons were in Belgium and Holland. So we set about, we put a little advert in some Dutch magazines and the Belgian magazines, yeah. asking people if they had any, any, back, any back copies that we could buy from them. We got a, a reply to our advert. One guy in Holland had 25 years of NPO magazines. Every single uh, edition for 25 years. And he was willing to sell them. So we made a price, went over and bought them, brought them back, scoured them all winter, mainly Gary, to be fair. And uh, he came up with a few names. Nothing to do with advertising, nothing to do with hype. It was solely looking at the result pages. After two or three months, he came to me and Ray and said, listen, these are the guys we've got to find. It was like... Not household names by any standards, you know, some of them were, we'd heard before. And we, we went over there, made an introduction, went to see them. Some of the pigeons we liked, some we didn't like. But it basically, we had an idea of what we wanted. We had a, the ideal pigeon. I'm brought up with these two, I was, I'm, a, bit, I'm a lot younger than these two, as you can see. <laughs> but I, I was brought up with them, and our ideals in pigeons are very much the same. So we had a, 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 our perfect pigeon, our ideal pigeon in our minds, aye. We knew exactly what we wanted. So we went from loft to loft to loft, looking for the pigeon we defined as good pigeons. Once we were happy with everything, we'd done our own work, never brought any pigeons in on a whim. We'd done a lot of homework, done a lot of background research. Once we were absolutely satisfied with everything, we then decided to invest some money. We bought as many of the best pigeons as we possibly could, direct children from the best breeders, from the best performers. And when we could, we actually bought the performance pigeon themselves. We went to a few different lofts, like I said, always looking for the ideal pigeon, the same stamp, the same type, the same balance, the same wing structure. Everything had to be very, very similar, although different bloodlines. And from 1995 onwards, that's what we've done every single year of our lives. And that's created what we consider to be probably the best team of pigeon we've ever had. Over 18 years, Steve, we've been through a lot of pigeons from a lot of top fanciers. But I think our fortunes really turned when we started Northern Premier Auctions in 2002. Because then we opened doors that wouldn't necessarily have been open to us ordinarily. Because we were doing sales for these people, we got to get no uh, knowledge about their pigeons that probably no one else would have got. Because they were giving us their, their, their breeding details, all their books. Because we compiled all the sales lists. And by doing that, we got an insight to their best lines. And it becomes evident. When you're listening to somebody, you only really get less than a quarter. When you leave someone's house, you forgot a lot about what you spoke about. Certain things stay in your mind, but when you've got it there in black and white for weeks and you're doing all the writing, doing sales lists, a hell of a lot sticks in your mind and that, and that what becomes really prevalent. And then when we've done that, we've had the pigeons over, looked after the pigeons for about six weeks before the auctions, and we've had a massive chance, the three of us, to go through them pigeons on a daily basis and pick out certain individuals, certain nice pigeons, look at the breeding lines, and we've made a decision to go to our own auctions and buy pigeons at every sale we've done. And that has really brought us to a higher level. To a level that I, I consider to, to be probably, well, I think you can safely say we're one of the best, if not the best, sprint to middle distance lots in England today. And that's all because of this research and work we put in to finding the best pigeons. That's very good, that, Les. Obviously, your background and all, all your research has been done. The information, what you've gathered together, as well as what you've learnt from Gary and Ray. The actual auctions has played a large part to, to, to help, as you just mentioned, of the famous Wall London Green in England today.
Yeah. Is there anything else you would like to mention uh, on anything else regarding that, uh, Les? No, we, over the years you always get, because we're a partnership and we're all different individuals, although we, we all strive for the one aim, is, is to be the best we possibly can yeah. and to run the best pitching we possibly can. We're just not three normal guys who, we're not a stud, you know, we're not big time, we've not got big elaborate lofts. We have a small team of pigeons that we absolutely work you know, they're not here because they've got fancy pedigrees from any big name loss, commercial loss. We've been to the biggest names in the game and sometimes their pigeons haven't suited us. And commercially wise, you might be better off keeping them pigeons. But that's not what we were about. We were about being the best we could possibly be at performing. And our level has gone higher and higher, the better pigeons we've kept that suited our systems. The pigeons we've kept are always the same consistent pigeons, have the same balance, the same type, the same wing structure. The same eye correlation, everything about them is, is virtually the same. Different bloodlines. But we've combined them bloodlines to form a performance team of pigeons. Not a commercial team of pigeons, a team of performance that can win from the first race to the last. And that's something we've done consciously. It's not something that we've found by accident. We've worked upon that for 18 years. 18 years of hard work has brought us to what, what I consider to be the top of our game. Can you explain then, Les, exactly what, how many average first feds you've had in over the last 18 years? Yes. And what your best performances and on, on your higher level to make, like your first, you've took previously, is it first 20, in, uh, 20 together, maybe the first 20 yeah, in the we've combine? Been, we've you know, been fortunate over the years, Steve, where we've had some real good races. And for you know, as we've compiled the information for the auction, you're kind of reliving a lot of the past performance, what you kind of forgot about, you know, over the years. But we have been, we've been looking up <coughs> every year since we've been partners, since 1995. We've been the premier prize winners in every single federation we flew in for 18 years. <coughs> Some of our proudest achievements, I would think, was probably winning 10 RPLA awards. <coughs> Some of the records we've set over the years, <coughs> excuse me, was probably winning the first 35 in the combine was a, a massive achievement. Winning the first eight positions in the national twice was something we're very proud of. Being the only people ever to have the first 10 in the three counties combine is another achievement we're proud of. Taking the first seven with all birds against almost 6,000 pigeons. Winning channel races from like maybe 600 kilometers against 8,000 birds when the pigeons have been in a basket four and five days through bad weather. Tells us <laughs> the pigeons have done the job and not us. You know, we've generally got good pigeons. We're the only people ever to win the Central Lancashire Combine, which is the biggest organisation in our area, three weeks in consecutive, three consecutive weeks. No one else has ever done that. There's only five races anyway. So you've got 350 members or more trying to win them five races. And this year, of all years, in North East winds, that have been a, the, probably the toughest year, we're the only people in five weeks racing. We were second in the first one. We won the next three and we were 13th in the fifth one. No one can match that. No one can ever get near, close to it. Things like that on a deal. But we've won an average of, what do you think, 40 firsts every year. 40 first prizes every year. And we've averaged about 11 or 12 first federations every year since we started. That's awesome, now, I, that. I, I don't know anyone in England who can match that. I really don't. There might be someone out there who might, who might challenge that. But I'd say, I, I can say that without fear of contradiction. I don't think anyone could. Not for the last 18 years. That's just showing you the actual... <laughs> excellent performance pigeons you've got and the excellent bloodlines which has made the actual uh, the, the backbone of your pigeons as a family through, through yourself Gary and Ray, awesome and that's why the pigeons have come through to be at world class level yeah. at the, the, the Loss of Wall London Greens in Manchester One thing we learned pretty quickly Steve when we became partners, although we were winning with, that, with, that, with our very early pigeons, we weren't consistent we know we'd win one week and you might be behind the next week or you get one pigeon on its own and wait two or three minutes for the next pigeon. But as we introduced pigeons from better fanciers and better pigeons, our system didn't change, but the performances really, really rose. And that was solely down to the pigeons we were bringing in. So between the three of us, I mean, we're not stupid, we quickly learned that the better the class of pigeon we're bringing in, the better our performance are becoming. And I know that's an easy statement to make, but a lot of people get carried away with the pigeons in the loft. We really, really got awoken to the fact that the better pigeon we were bringing in, our performances, we weren't getting one pigeon. We were getting sixes and sevens and eights all on the same time. 
and we wasn't winning one week behind the next. We were winning. We won the federation ten weeks on the trot, which has never been achieved since or before. But we weren't just winning it. We were taking the first twelve into a T3, not on not on electronic timing. The old T3 taking the, the rubbers off. We were taking the first twelve four weeks on the bounce, and then the first ten, the first nine, the first seven, and then I think our biggest achievement was. Obviously, you get levelled at them. They must be in a good position. We joined two federations one year. We were the furthest east in one and the furthest west in the other. And on seven consecutive weekends, we won both feds. And it's impossible to be in the best position for both feds on the same day. And yet, it didn't seem to matter. They won our pigeons and only sending a maximum of 22 pigeons to each fed. Not only that, Les, you've got different wins. Even if you're yeah. on the west in one or the east, you've got east wins and west wins on the amount of performance you were doing it yeah, time after time. They it weren't going to be all the same win, would they? It didn't matter, Steve, to, 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 to the pigeons what, what fed they went in or what wind they went in. For seven weekends on the bounce, yeah. they won both feds. And the, the worst result we had was first and second fed. But we were taking the first six, the first seven, the first nine, the first six in both federations on the same day with a team of 22 to each. And that's splitting yeah. your team and all, as you know. So yeah. you know, it's splitting awesome. your team, yeah, it makes life a bit harder. That's brilliant. It was. It's probably one of our better years. Yeah.